Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of Toy Geek Maniac. I'm your host, Constance Miller. I have two figures to review in this episode, and for the first one, I need to take a look at something I said back in May of 2024. Yeah. Scarlet, as I said, is my favorite, and I think she's the only one I'm going to get. I've got quite a few figures of Scarlet, so I might just do a shrine to her. So yes, I have the retro card back version of G.I. Joe Classifieds, Duke. And I don't regret this, I just didn't think I needed him as much as I did. So let's open him up. So I'm not gonna lie, a part of the reason I really wanted this figure is the fact that the face sculpt on Duke is rather attractive. <laughs> and so, um, I'm gonna dive into articulation, um, but there's one thing I need to point out, and that the American flag is reversed on his shoulder here. That is going to piss a lot of people off. In fact, it kind of pisses me off a little bit. And I'm, I'm patriotic to a degree. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into articulation. gets a little bit of a look down, a little bit of a look back, side to side, rocking pivot, somewhat, great lateral lift in the arms, and he has butterfly joints. this in the bicep, multifunctional double jointed elbows, there's a forward and back wrist flex on the left hand, there is a side to side on the right hand, get a pivot in the torso which kind of snaps back, I don't know if that was intentional. But there's also a turn in the waist. An excellent lateral lift in the leg. And you get a thigh turn. A multifunctional double jointed knee. Boot turn. Flex in the foot. and the rocking side to side motion. Now let's move on to his accessories. Ooh, he's kind of in a sassy pose right now. <laughs> I mean like sassy. 
First off, he comes with this helmet, which I wasn't sure I was going to display him with, but the visor comes down, and if it was permanently affixed up here, I would have said no, because I didn't want to cover up his pretty face. But this is kind of like really cool, so I might just have to. Comes with two rifles, a set of binoculars. I'm not sure if this is meant to be legible or not, but this is his backpack. Um, oh, it's not gonna let me focus in. But this can be peckled into back, you can line up the shoulder strap, and snap it into place, we'll throw in his binoculars just for good measure. He has a set of clenched fists, a blade that can be sheathed, and his boots as such, and he also has a pistol that can be sheathed as well. But that looks so much even cooler. So much even cooler, really? I was a child of the 80s. Anyhow, that's Duke. The next figure that I have coming up is Wolfsbane. Uh, who's been a member of the New Mutants and X Factor in the X Men spinoff comics? And I really, really wanted a figure of her. In fact, I'm gonna have to bust out my 90s versions of Havoc and Polaris to go with this figure on display. It's just gonna have to happen. But let's go ahead and open her up and take a look. Well, I would like to say that this figure is everything that I want it to be, but it is not. I was so excited when I heard that they were doing a wolf thing. And on a surface level, the figure looks great, but the face looks so cartoony. And you can tell that her hair and mutton chops, if you will, are just plopped right up. It's not a part of the molding. And in fact, there's a teeny amount of gavage that I'm not going to bitch about. But you can tell. Um, she doesn't have a tail. And I thought for sure, I thought for sure, based on reading the X-Factor comics, that she had a tail in this form. But apparently she's not a full lycanthrope in this form, so she doesn't have a tail. I would have really preferred her to have a tail. I just would think that would set this figure apart from anything else. But let's go ahead and get into articulation. She doesn't get much of a look down. She gets a little bit of a look back. Her neck joint is very weak. So we get the side to side and a little bit of a pivot. 
the lateral lift in the arm is great. We do get a bicep turn. A multifunctional double jointed elbow in which we do get to see some detailing of fur. And that is the saving grace of this figure. Um, the flex of the wrist, and there's special detail to the claws. That I think looks great. A little bit of a crunch forward, a nice crunch back, pivot is in the torso, not the waist. The lateral lift is this, so so. Thigh turn. Multifunctional double jointed knees, which you also get a lot of fur detail. There's no boot turn. Flex in the foot is. There it goes. And the rocking side to side motion. Now one thing I noticed about this figure is that the plastic seems very pliable. And that is something I'm not fond of. Because if you have figures displayed on the shelf for a period of time, depending on what pose that they're in, gravity is going to pull it, and you're slowly going to get that kind of motion, or you might get a lean as far as when the plastic softens, in heat especially. In the cold, not so much. That is one thing that I'm having an issue with my Funko Pop collection, is that in the heat, this room isn't blessed with central air. Um, Thanks to the dirty window, or a dirty fan in the window. Um, so, heat is going to be prevalent, and I'm really worried that this figure is not going to hold up the way that it should. Wolf Spain does come with an alternate set of hands. Watching this episode of Toy Geek Maniac. I really, really, really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified when Redson Productions uploads the video. Also, you can check out some details in the descriptions if you want to help the channel grow. Don't forget to share with your friends. And above all else, you watching this video means so much to me. More than anything else. The likes, the subscribes, the whatever. I'm pulling a Celine Dion moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> A little gas bubble. <laughs> but at any rate, thank you once again. Love and light to you all.